Hi, I'm Don Dawson. Today we'll take a close look at the problem of fatigue in the workplace and discuss some effective strategies we can all use to avoid it. We're not at our best when we're tired. Tired people make mistakes, sometimes big ones. Fatigue can be a problem in all types of situations, whether you're operating a forklift, using a grinder, driving a truck, or doing any other job that requires you to be focused and alert. Feeling exhausted interferes with our ability to think and act effectively. It prevents us from performing up to our potential, reduces our productivity, and significantly increases our chances of being hurt, even killed, on the job. It can be expensive as well. Altogether, the problem of worker fatigue costs U.S. businesses more than $130 billion per year. But fatigue can be prevented. In this program, we'll discuss what causes fatigue, the hazards that it creates, and what you can do to avoid it. We're all familiar with fatigue. It's that feeling of physical and mental exhaustion that we have when we don't get enough sleep. We're working extra hard. We're feeling a lot of stress or from a combination of these factors. The symptoms of fatigue can vary from person to person, but they all mean the same thing. They're your body's way of telling you that it needs time to rest and recover. There are a number of things that can cause us to feel fatigued. For example, studies show that most people need from seven to nine hours of sleep a day. So we can feel fatigued when we don't get enough sleep, or the sleep that we do get is interrupted or of low quality. Home or lifestyle changes can cause problems by affecting our sleep patterns or increase stress, which can make it difficult to sleep. Sleep disorders, such as insomnia and sleep apnea, can also interfere with our ability to sleep. All of this can make us feel as if we're running on empty. In a workplace, there are certain types of tasks that can frequently cause fatigue. As you'd expect, these jobs tend to be mentally or physically demanding, boring, or involve a lot of repetition. The normal eight hours a day, five days a week daytime work schedule is designed to give employees ample time for rest and recovery. But for many of us, that eight hour day is anything but normal. Extended shifts can cause fatigue by requiring us to work more hours per day than our body can tolerate. Irregular and on-call shifts can be stressful because their hours often change from day to day, making it hard to establish a normal sleep cycle. Night shifts require us to be on the job when we would usually be sleeping. Night shift employees can also become fatigued because the sleep they are able to get during the day is usually shorter and of lower quality than normal. In one way, fatigue can be helpful. It lets us know when we're running out of gas and we need to get some rest so we can bounce back. If we don't get that rest though, we start carrying a burden of fatigue that increases our risk of making mistakes, which can lead to incidents and injuries. This makes fatigue especially hazardous while we're working. For example, missing an hour and a half of sleep reduces alertness by one-third, which can make it harder to recognize and avoid hazards. Fatigue also slows reaction times. A worker who is exhausted can take about 30% longer to respond to a hazard than one who is fully rested. That extra 30% can mean the difference between a near miss and an incident 
or even between life and death. Working evening and night shifts when our body thinks we should be sleeping can also have an effect. Compared to day shifts, accident and injury rates increase, almost 20% during evening shifts and 30% during night shifts. The drowsiness that is often associated with fatigue can be hazardous as well. Dozing briefly while working with hazardous chemicals, operating machine tools, or driving a vehicle can have tragic consequences. Fatigue can also cause us to become more irritable and less motivated. It can result in headaches, an upset stomach, and digestive problems as well. And over the long term, fatigue may even lead to heart disease and some types of cancer. Employers know that being fatigued while they're at work is bad for their employees and for the company. It can drive down productivity and decrease employee satisfaction with their jobs, while increasing absenteeism and turnover, all of which increases expenses. So management has a strong motivation to try to reduce employee fatigue. One way to do this is to build systems into the workplace that help keep everyone alert and engaged. These engineering controls can include things like installing better lighting, as well as maintaining comfortable temperatures and reasonable noise levels. Another approach to reducing fatigue is through scheduling and other administrative practices. For example, instead of extending a work shift and adding more hours to the workday, employees can be scheduled to work more days at regular hours. This allows adequate time between shifts for people to rest and recover. Employers can also avoid having employees put in extended hours of heavy physical or mental exertion by spreading the work over more days or reassigning people to temporarily help out. Shifts can also be designed to allow employees to vary the tasks that they perform reducing fatigue that occurs when their work is boring or repetitive in nature. Scheduling frequent micro breaks is another technique that can combat fatigue. It enables workers to refresh themselves by stretching, changing positions, and changing their focus for a little while. Training also plays an important role in preventing fatigue. Information can be provided to everyone on how to avoid the hazards of fatigue and managers and supervisors can learn to recognize its symptoms so they can take appropriate action if someone shows signs of fatigue. As we've discussed, when you have a demanding work schedule, it can be tough to get the seven to nine hours of sleep every day that you need to stay sharp on the job. But even if you have to grab your shut eye while the sun is shining, there are some good habits that can help you get the best quality of sleep possible. This sleep hygiene begins with following a regular routine before bedtime to quiet down your mind and body and prepare yourself to sleep. It can include taking a relaxing bath or shower, reading or listening to some soothing music for a while. Next, make sure the room where you'll be sleeping is as dark and quiet as possible. Use blinds, curtains or a sleep mask to keep out the light. Mute your phone and answering machine. You can even wear earplugs. Keeping the room cool can also help you sleep so run an air conditioner or fan in hot weather. Not only will it reduce the heat, but the sound of the equipment can cover up noises from outside and help you to relax. Going to bed right after a heavy meal or on an empty stomach can both make it harder to get to sleep. So avoid eating large meals less than two hours before you plan to hit the hay. If you're hungry at bedtime, have a small, low-fat, easily digestible snack 
such as fresh fruit, yogurt, oatmeal, or a piece of toast. Drinking alcohol or caffeinated beverages can interfere with your sleeping too. And remember, any liquids you take on board before you go to sleep may wake you up later when you have to offload them. Nicotine can disturb your sleep as well, so avoid smoking before bedtime and consider quitting altogether. The healthier you are, the better you can fight off fatigue. A healthy lifestyle helps you generate the energy and alertness you need to stay on the ball throughout your workday. So in addition to getting enough sleep, you need to both eat right and get enough exercise. Pay attention to what you eat and when you eat it. Your body needs a steady supply of fuel. So eat at least three meals a day and eat them at regular times. Stick to normal day shift meal times and types of food as much as possible. For example, if you're on a night shift, you could eat a lunch when you wake up, a dinner before you head to work, and a breakfast as soon as you return home. For top performance, choose foods that will give you the most energy, such as proteins from lean meats like skinless chicken and fish and complex carbohydrates from pastas, rice, fruits, vegetables, and whole grain breads. Avoid fatty red meats, pastries, salty snack foods, whole milk dairy products, and candy. They may taste good, but can rob you of energy and negatively affect your overall health as well. Having a snack can help you stay energized during your workday, but many vending machines only sell high fat high sugar, and high salt snacks, which you should stay away from. If the machines where you work offer healthier selections, like fruit, low-fat cheese, yogurt, or trail mix, then enjoy. Otherwise, consider bringing healthy snacks of your own, such as nuts mixed with plain yogurt, baby carrots with low-fat cream cheese dip, or an apple. Regular exercise is also an important part of a healthy lifestyle. Choose any activity you enjoy, walking, running, light aerobics, cycling, and use it to raise your heart rate for 20 to 30 minutes at a time at least several days a week. You'll be surprised how good it can make you feel. Your doctor can help by suggesting an exercise plan that they feel will work well for you. As we've seen, fatigue can create real hazards in the workplace. But there are things that you can do to maintain your energy and alertness to avoid these hazards. Let's review. Fatigue is a feeling of sleepiness or exhaustion that can result from too little sleep, extended physical or mental work, or stress and anxiety. Fatigue can interfere with your ability to think and act effectively and significantly increases the risk of incidents and injuries. Employers can help reduce worker fatigue in their facilities through a combination of engineering and administrative controls. Good sleep hygiene can improve both the quantity and quality of sleep. You can also fight fatigue by maintaining a healthy diet and getting plenty of exercise. Now that you understand what causes fatigue and what you can do to fight it, you can work to ensure that you are alert and safe morning, noon, and night.